History with Dan presents Lost Buildings of Hartford. Hi. This is a historic photograph of Hartford, Connecticut that was emailed to me by Richard Walsh. It was taken circa 1900 by his great-grandfather Richard Nichols, who lived 1850 to 1935. The view is in front of the old State House on Main Street, looking northeast at the buildings along State Street, just north of the old State House. The photo was taken about 12 or 13 years before the Isle of Safety, which many fondly remember, was erected in this area. The Isle of Safety was later moved to the Connecticut Trolley Museum in East Windsor. I'll have a link to that in the description below. Today, this block of what was State Street is now a pedestrian-only area, and the entire block of buildings is now taken up by the large State House Square office and retail complex. The only thing from this old photograph recognizable today, besides the old State House on the right, is the large building in the middle of the block. This was the first national bank built in 1898 and designed by the well-known architect Ernest Flagg. The facade of that building was preserved as part of the State House Square development. But what are the other buildings that existed here in 1900, and what became of them? Starting on the far left, only part of the building and the sign on top of it is visible in the photograph. The full sign reads, Elihu Gears Sons City Directory. These were the offices of the Hartford Printing Company, a printing shop and stationery store founded by Elihu Gear in 1838, and it moved into this building in 1850. The thing this company is famous for, for those who study the history of Hartford, is that every year, from 1842 to 1928, it published the Gears Hartford City Directory. This one here is for 1899, near the time the photograph was taken. The Gear building was torn down in 1928 and replaced by a new one erected by Federal Bake Shops. Here's a picture that shows the Gear building in 1865, right there, and the building that was just west of it on the corner of State and Main Streets. This was a large block called Exchange Corner. Here's an even earlier view from 1850. This was also known as Goodwin's Corner because Goodwin's Drug Store was located in the corner storefront from 1844 until 1922. This was the corner where later the Art Deco style Harvey and Lewis building stood for many decades, from the 1920s until it was torn down in the 1980s to make way for the State House Square development. Now the large block between Gears and the First National Bank, which I mentioned earlier, this block for years was the site of the United States Hotel, where businessmen and politicians visiting Hartford would stay. It began as a coffee house run by Jabez Ripley in the late 1700s and in 1829 was taken over by Homer Morgan. Later, from 1865 to 1899, the hotel was managed by David A. Rood. At the end of the block, where the first national building would later be erected, was the Eagle Hotel, later called the Trumbull House. Mr. Rood acquired this hotel, as well as the United States, which he already had, and consolidated it with the United States Hotel. So the whole block was one hotel, and for many years it was the largest hotel in the state. The hotel's main entrance was marked by its famous balcony. But just before our photo was taken in 1900, the hotel closed, and the balcony was removed, so it doesn't appear in the image. In 1898, the easternmost section of the block, 
was replaced by the First National Bank, which had been renting space in that part of the building. Here's another view of it. The remaining portion of the hotel was replaced by a W.T. Grant store and the adjacent Regal Theater in the 1920s. This building was also where the famous Honus Oyster House was located, starting in 1848. It was located in the hotel building, and then when the hotel building was replaced by the Grant store, it relocated into that building where it stayed until 1982 when the restaurant finally closed. Next to the First National Bank is the Hartford National Bank, which was located here in this Greek temple-like building for a century, from 1811 until 1912. It was then replaced by the Princess Theater, which was around until it was demolished in 1957 for an extension of the neighboring First National Bank. Next to that is the Hartford Current Building, built in 1888. It was designed by George Keller, the architect of the Soldiers and Sailors Memorial Arch in Hartford. The current building was demolished in 1951 and replaced by a Walgreens drugstore. On this postcard, you can see the current building, which had banks on either side of it. On the left are the First National and Hartford National Banks, which I've already mentioned. On the right was the National Exchange Bank. This building dates back to 1834 or thereabouts, but it had a new facade in 1869 that was designed by Bryant and Rogers of Boston. Now, this building was significantly transformed later and became the Far East Garden Restaurant, which was located here from 1917 to 1936. It was then replaced by a Sears store, and that Sears store also took out the last thing that's visible on the block here, which was the Long Brothers Restaurant and Hotel. The sign for it here is partly visible on the side of the building. So the building you see here was built in 1871. It was originally called the Gregory Building. The Long Brothers, John and Timothy, opened a restaurant in the building in 1895. John C. Long was an interesting character. He competed in the Highland Games and was a champion in the caber toss. Athletes would frequent his restaurant the brothers soon expanded their business into a hotel that included adjacent buildings to the end of the block where State Street intersected with Market Street. The Longs retired in 1921, and the original 1871 section became the Hotel Oxford before it was finally demolished in 1936. The remaining portion came down in the 1940s to make way for a parking lot, although a cafeteria was soon erected in 1951. Of course, everything along this block, except for the First National Bank facade, was removed in the 1980s for the State House Square complex that's still there today. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. You can also leave a comment below and remember to hit the like button and thank you for watching.